<coughs> morning, everybody. How are you this morning? Right, all better for some basil. <laughs> Is it, what, what was his wife called? She's coming late. <laughs> well, this morning I'd love to take you through the history of the Church of England's involvement with education since 1811. And how it is that 20% of schools and over 850,000 children attend schools with the Church of England Foundation. I would love to guide you through the past six years of seismic change in education, which began with the introduction of academies. First, for failing schools, then for the most capable schools, and now, whether they wish to or not, effectively for the vast majority of schools. <coughs> I would love to speak about further and higher education and the Church of England's involvement in this. I would love to, but I can't, given the constraints of an address like this. So what I want to focus on are some of the challenges and the opportunities that the process of academisation in the schools currently holds for us in the Diocese of Bristol, and particularly in relation to our vision of creating connections. And I want to do it under the following headings. Foundation and inheritance. Foundation versus fortress. And foundation and future. You'll note there is one common word there. So first, foundation and inheritance. 26% of all primary schools in England and 6% of all secondary schools carry our brand. And they're designated Voluntary Control, VC, or Voluntary Aided, VA, C of E schools. And the majority being VC. In contrast to the suggestion in the title, Controlled, the governing body of a VC school has got a lower representation of foundation governors than a VA school. More significantly, and this is important, the Christian identity and culture that runs through a church school can be very deep or hardly noticeable and really indistinguishable from a next door school with no church affiliation. The rise of multi-academy trusts, or MACs as we call them, and the shrinkage of local authorities has focused attention on the implication of having a church foundation, not only for local schools, but for dioceses and for the National Society, which is the Church of England body overseeing their governments. Despite the reservations of many in the Church of England around academisation, the National Society and dioceses like ours have decided to respond positively to this and to make it an opportunity. The latest expression of the reasoning behind this is, uh, and the vision that's set before us that we're trying to pursue or encourage to pursue, is articulated in a very recent paper that came out of our education office from the National Society. July 2016. The paper was entitled, or is entitled, Church of England Vision for Education, Deeply Christian, Serving the Common Good. In essence, it reaffirms our historic commitment to the education of all children regardless of their background, including in relation to religious convictions. The vision is underpinned and suffused with a Christian understanding of what life in all its fullness, Jesus' words in John chapter 10, might mean, and how it's nurtured in our complex societal dynamic. What's happening in education, as I think you'll all realise, is a real sea change. And a sea change of academisation 
requires dioceses to take responsibility for education in all its parts. In other words, running schools and being totally accountable for their performance. That's a very, very big change. This is what the diocese now does through DMAT, our Diocese of Bristol Academies Trust. Centrally, the Church of England has committed itself to establishing what it's called a foundation for educational leadership, which is based on its biblically and theologically grounded uh, understanding of our role articulated in the paper that I've already mentioned. And the foundation is in essence an institute or a college for providing high quality training and development. It's about supporting and encouraging and promoting excellent, excellence in what is and will continue to be, friends, a continually evolving landscape. So with this background of foundation and heritage in mind, I want to turn to the second strand, which is foundation versus fortress. Away from the centre and out towards the periphery, one might say the chalk face of the dioceses and the local schools, governing bodies and DBEs, diocesan boards of education, people are waking up to the implications of their foundation status in relation to the options before them. With respect to church schools, the great majority of which are VC in Bristol Diocese, a key question has been around choice. Choice. Can church schools join a multi-academy trust other than the diocesan one, DBAT? Can they form a mat of their own with other schools? The former one, joining a multi-academy academy tr trust that's outside of um, the church uh, ours or a church school one, has been a key issue for the DBE to think through. And believe me, it's necessitated many, many hours of investigation, navigation and discussion. And the latter, you will be pleased to hear, is a synod, often robust and extended. Maybe you won't like the extended so much. What's remarkable is that the board, with all its diversity of experience and perspective and representation, reached a consensus on the inadvisability of church foundation schools becoming part of non-church mass. Time doesn't allow me to elaborate on all the reasons behind the decision, but suffice it to say, the reaction to this decision has been mixed. <laughs> Read my eyebrows. <laughs> Some of the schools in the diocese now feel protected. Others feel that they've been constrained. And the fact that other dioceses have reached different decisions has led to the board, and hence to the diocese, and we are the diocese, as I'm often reminded by a chap who can't be here today, Simon Stephen M, who's in our prayers. The fact that other dioceses have reached different decisions has led to us being accused of having a fortress mentality. And I think I can understand why they say that. However, the board's judgment accords with the latest guidance coming from the National Society. And just to alert you, the board has just begun exploring another request over choice, which turns out to be much more complicated than it appears. The devil really is in the detail with these things. Complexity around, around many of the issues doesn't make for simple communication. And speaking for myself and my colleagues, we're learning from our mistakes and acknowledging them, which actually has been appreciated. <coughs> Sadly, some members of the Synod here today will be aware of how easy it is, or can be, for the diocese to be misrepresented in such matters, which is of reputational concern. We could have our name dragged through the mud 
in various parts of the diocese. In relation to church schools, chiefly VC schools, academization is a process which tends to either weaken or strengthen links with the diocese. There doesn't seem to be a middle way. It will go one way or the other. And the board is looking to do the latter to strengthen our links. And DBAT is working with schools to provide the maximum degree of freedom given and agreed foundation. Maximum degree of freedom given and agreed foundation. So lastly, foundation, what would be your word to tag along if you were listening earlier? It's future, foundation and future. There are those who ask whether a diocese should be running schools at all, or whether this is truly our mission. Others ask whether our inheritance is now becoming a drain on energy and resources rather than an asset and a multiplier. These are important questions which the Bishops' Council and Diocesan Synod have acknowledged, yet remain committed to making the most of this, of this testing educational landscape. DBAP has a growing reputation for competence and for quality, which is recognised not just within the higher circles of the Church of England, but within those of government itself, in the educational establishment. Our success in making bids for new schools both reflects and reinforces this. <coughs> 